All right. It's it's day four, fourth day of the year, fourth day of the challenge. Got some great momentum under our belts. We've talked about the most important stuff, uh, exercise, uh, training, cardio conditioning, food, um, you know, planning, planning meals. Now, I, I know I say this every single session. This is the most important. This is the most important uh, talk of the whole series because uh, this is the this is the goose that lays the golden egg because this is really how you this is this talk is about how we control our time and energy. And I'm going to tell you a story that um, kind of encompasses what we're dealing with. And this happened. I think I was 20. I was 25 or 26. I was uh, it, I was about to graduate college and uh, I was a broke college student. And uh, at this time, my mom was dealing with some mental health issues and she needed a lot of care um, that she didn't have access to. She was staying with family. She was going in and out of the hospital. And I was really trying, I was taking on too much uh, when it came to uh, caring for my mother at the time, trying to, you know, start my business, run my business and, um, and take care of my mom and, and somehow graduate college and figure, figure out my own personal life. But I was, she was in the hospital and she was getting released and she was going, uh, back to a situation which I wasn't excited about. And I was driving my car to, um, to meet her and, uh, pick her up from the hospital. And I was, I was, it was out in, um, in Beaverton, the, uh, it was, what's the name of that, uh, Sacred Heart Vincent's or no, St. Vincent's, uh, hospital out in Beaverton. I was driving out there. It was a long drive and I was in, a, it was in my, uh, Toyota and my gas light came on. And I um, had enough gas to get to the hospital and probably back to my house, but I didn't have enough. Uh, I didn't have any money, so I couldn't put any gas in my tank. And I, I laughed out loud when I saw the gas light come on in my car, because that's sort of the way I've been living my life up to that point. I would drive my car in the wrong direction until it ran out of gas. That was my whole modus operandi. And uh, I got lucky because my aunt was also there at the hospital and she was able to float me 20 bucks so I could uh, put some gas in the tank. But um, I, I always go back to that moment when I'm a really passionately engaged with something that isn't helping me and might even be hurting me. And I'm very, I don't have to get hit with the brick these days when I'm um, going through my day and my week. I, I just got off a call with a nice young man who I don't think is um, going to uh, take any meaningful action. And the whole time I was thinking about who is this for? Like, am I, am I really helping this person by, uh, by listening a little too much, by giving them a little too much of my time and energy? So I need to be more assertive and asking good questions when I'm on the phone with those people. But I share that story just to illustrate the swath of, uh, places we can put our our valuable time and energy, and it it might be, it might almost sound you know sacrilegious to say, well, you shouldn't pour energy into your family or people who need your help in the community, of which there are plenty. Um, but if you're a caring person, and if you're in my network, you're a really kind person because that's all I that that's all I hang out with is people who care about themselves and the world and are very generous. Uh, it can be a lot. So um, there, the, the saying in the coaching industry and in the behavioral change industry is your priorities and your values show up in two places consistently. They show up in your calendar and they show up in your checkbook. So if I open up your calendar, I'm going to see where your priorities are and it's going to be pretty obvious. If I open up your checkbook, it's going to be very clear where your energy is going and what you care about. And the, the, the purpose of this talk is to figure out where you belong in that list of priorities 
in your in your calendar specifically because today is about time management. And I like to use the the metaphor of driving your car in the wrong. You only have so much gas. You only have so much time. So if you don't prioritize your health objectives and these actions that we talked about at the beginning of the week, these small actions that lead up to these really big health outcomes, then you're not going to be able to, to purchase them from anyone else. And the uh, you're the only person that can give you th these gifts. And you have the only currency, which is your time and attention, that it's really valuable, that's really meaningful for when it comes to your health outcomes. So there was a sheet that I emailed out. And on this sheet has a list of um, activities, training, recovery, uh, cardio conditioning. Um, there's different types of workouts across the top. And in the, uh, in the first column, there is a list of meals, meal prep, uh, what your bedtime is. I put, I picked these out because these are the most critical and also they're, they're the most often pushed aside moments in our health and fitness journey. I, I deal with this all the time with myself. I negotiate with myself. Ah, I'll move my workout back just a little bit so I can uh, help this person out or I can finish this task or whatever, instead of what I ought to be doing, which is flipping it saying, hey, this workout can really only happen now. And I can finish my work a little bit later on in the day. So these, these lists, the, the, the list of items that I've given you are items that are easy, they're easy to do and they're easy not to do. It's really easy to skip lunch and uh, get on a work call, or it's really easy to push your bedtime back an hour to uh, spend time with uh, your family or watch a program. And heck, you have to do that. So this isn't about perfection, but this is about prioritization. So we're trying to figure out what the intention is um, in each of these areas, uh, what when you're going to do what, and as you write it down, if you feel hesitancy about where these or how these are going to get scheduled, that means that there's a conflict. That means there's a conflict between what my obligations are or have been in the past and what I want for myself. And that's not bad news. That's good news because this is where the artful negotiation and the recruitment of other people into your uh, into your world, how that's going to help you. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow when it comes to community and accountability. But for right now, this is going to be able to, one, give you a, not just a list of things to do, although it is that, It's this process is also going to help you identify what will be easy that you can manage really well with the skills and resources available and what, what will be more of a challenge, especially a challenge to do consistently. So, when it comes to uh, meal or eating meals, planning meals, bedtime, and um, and training, I'm going to go through these in order of my personal. This is my personal idea of the order of priority of these because, uh, the, so I'm going to give you the um, the order that I think they're most important because I think that that's the order that they're going to be the most valuable. But uh, I'll give you the caveat. If there's something in my list that seems very easy for you and easy to manage and, and doesn't take a lot of time or energy, that's good. You can move that towards the top because it's not going to be a source of conflict. So if you're someone who goes to bed religiously at 9 p.m. and that's the way of it or 11 p.m. or whatever it is, great. You can put that at the top, schedule that in right now, and then you don't have to um, spend as much energy uh, worrying about that. So for me... The, I, I, the most important thing on my program and, and when I'm working with clients, this is the, the I get the most aggressive about is I want to know when what they're eating. So I want to know what their meal plan is. I want to know when their prep is. So if you pick out when you're going to decide and you're going to you're going to pre-negotiate all of those, all of that, the time and the energy that you're going to set aside for food. So your meal prep would be making the list, going grocery shopping. If someone else, or you have a, a service that does the grocery shopping, um, you know, when you're going to hit buy, when does it get delivered? Uh, when, when are you going to actually assemble the food into a proper, into a proper meal? Because when I wake up in the morning, it's like, it's a sprint from dusk till dawn. I do not have time to assemble meals and get them arranged. I could take them to, to the office with me or I can eat them, but I can't, I can't do organization and prep work. 
So I want to see the when the when that prep moment is going to happen. So for most people, it's going to be on Sundays and maybe again on Wednesday. But uh, I have friends, I have clients who do nightly prep work where they get everything ready for the next day every single night. They like cooking. They like fresh food. That's if that's important to you, then then direct that to you know you, you can schedule that for as a nightly ritual. And in terms of time, it takes me about two hours to prep four days worth of food. If you're doing one meal at a time, it might take you 30 minutes. If you're proficient at it, it might take you 45 minutes or an hour if you're not. But you got you to give yourself a little bit of buffer for uh, the inconvenience of other people, whether it's someone using your, you know, using up all the salt or getting in your way in the kitchen or, you know, getting, getting, uh, uh, getting in front of you as you're trying to do your your uh, your meal prep, so you have to leave a little bit of buffer for the uh, the variables in your life, but it should be pretty clear when that's going to happen. So once you have the prep figured out, then you can schedule out the meals when you're going to actually eat during the day. Now, this is uh, th this is tough in our this day and age where. We can always take a phone call where we have a lot of different liberals at different times during the day. So I like to game the system as much as I can. Uh, if there's a phone call where I can eat my meal and be on the call, I will do that. So I try not, I try to, to if I'm mostly listening and asking a couple questions, or if it's a, a training module where I don't have to speak, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to double up my time that way so I can uh, fulfill my obligations while I eat. Sometimes, depending on the type of meeting, I might even eat if I'm with a client, just as a demonstration that I do this too. I will also, um, you know, eat my meal, you know, while I'm working because I'll do whatever I have to do to be successful on the health front. And you can call it unprofessional, but I've been called much worse. So uh, scheduling out meals, using as many hacks as you can, um, if you, you, you've got the way that you've done your meal plan, um, I've got shakes. If you've got smoothies, you can usually get away with that in a, in a meeting as well, or um, as an early morning meal before your day starts, which is really good. So you squeeze in those moments as much as you can to take the pressure off. And then I also like to, to double leverage. If I'm going to take 30 minutes and just eat or 20 minutes and just eat, I also like to double up the, the time that I'm spending on food and using it as relationship building. So having lunch with a coworker, you know, and getting into their world for a little bit or um, pho phoning a friend and, and you know, having a mutual uh, moment uh, where we get to really spend some time with each other. And I'm, I'm also training myself to eat slowly. So it's a good mindful practice and I can really be present with what they're saying, not having to respond. So that trick of doubling up the work, work and food and doubling up food and personal relationship building is, is it helps me keep, keep strict and honest to what's in my calendar, that there's multiple forms of accountability and commitment there. So uh, those are, once I've got the meal prep planned, once I've got the meals in place, then when are you going to do your training? Now, the reason why I put this third is because there's 168 hours in a week and only four or five of them are going to be training. However, 30 of 21, 21 of those hours are going to be hours where you're going to have to eat something. So you're going to have many more decisions to make around food and moments. You have a, free, a higher frequency of opportunity to get a win while you're, when you're eating. So I, I, the most leverage we have is actually with that meal plan where you can get the most wins. Training is really important. It's also something that uh, I'm very confident that I can sandwich down something small and expand to something larger when I have uh, more or less time, but not everybody is as confident. So the, the plan that I provided was a pretty simple plan for uh, most most people who are familiar with the gym to execute, uh, you, you might need a little, uh, you know, review of the video to do that. Uh, might need a little bit of practice, but that workout will take 
20 to 30 minutes on the strength training days and about 30 minutes in the cardio days. So it's pretty efficient, pretty, pretty tight. But if you have longer workouts, you're going to have to be very dutiful about when you schedule them is for instance, if I have an hour of weight training that I know is packed with with barbell work and heavy dumbbell work, it's stuff that can't be substituted. And if I try to sandwich that time or squish it down, I'm not going to be able to actually get the value out of that training. So you want to be very mindful about where you schedule these things. And it's a practice. So saying, saying no to somebody trying to encroach upon your, your personal time, that's a muscle and that's a skill that you develop over, over repetitions, just like building muscle in the gym, you have to build muscle of saying no and protecting that time. So I, I think that of all the things that we've gone through so far, of all the items that we've listed, all the opportunities, your training time is the most fragile because if it gets disrupted or if you compromise on it, it will, uh, it, if you're trying to go on a you know 30 minute run and you only give yourself 15 minutes to do cardio that day, you're really, uh, you're really making it difficult to comply and, um, you know, and have integrity with your plan, which is going to lower your own buy-in for the next day and the next week. So uh, the, the way that I do this is I put my training time in my quietest mo- moments of the day. So I know that there's not very many people in the gym between 5.30 and 6.30 in the morning. And I, if I can get my workout done at that time, I'm going to have fewer people uh you know, pushing for my attention while I'm trying trying to train and no one wants to schedule a call that early. So I'm very, I'm very much ahead of the game and I'm already in a good mood by 7 AM. So if you could put that, that personal time for your exercise in a place where it's going to be the least threatened and you're going to have the least work to do around it. So uh, you're protecting your time by scheduling. And then you're also developing the habit and the practice of telling people no. Uh, when, when my friend told me a very great secret, it wasn't a secret, but it was a very, very insightful uh, perspective one day where he said, when someone asks you for a favor, if you tell them no, they're going to think about it for an hour or less, and then they're going to get on with their life. If someone asks you for a favor and you say yes, it's going to bother you for two weeks it's going to, it's going to eat you up that you didn't get your workout in or that you had to get up early or whatever it is that, that um, you had to sacrifice. And that will occupy, you know, too much real estate in your mind. And I, I was really grateful for that insight because it certainly had been true in my case. Most of the time people couldn't even remember when I told them no, but I, I remembered it. You know, I remember for months afterwards. (sighs) Being a human is hard. Um, Specific to scheduling exercise, does anybody have uh, any exercise specific questions before I talk about snacks and bedtime? I mean, the main thing like we talked about yesterday for me is like, you know, the cadence between a weight workout and the cardio workouts and like how to structure that. Like, I would just love to say like, okay, the right thing to do generally is Monday, this Tuesday, that Wednesday, that, and like the right mix of whatever. So I don't know if we're going to get into examples, but that would be so helpful. Well, let's, let's just use you. We've got the time. So um, you want to work out five days a week? Um, Probably realistic is four and anything else is a bonus. Okay. So you want to work out four days a week and that's including running or is that just which, what does what that break down to? That's a good point. So I would like to run three days a week and I would like to work out two days a week, like with, a, with my, with strength. Okay. So you, you, you said you'd like to run three and work out two or run two and work out two? Run three and work out and strength train two. Okay, great. So, um, the, if you want to make a four, a four day plan with a fifth day as a bonus, then I would do, 
Um, three days of of training. Okay, so I would do an upper body workout and a run, just a lower body workout, an upper body workout and a run, and then a and then just a run. And then, so that's four days. And then if you miss one workout, you can tack it on to any, you know, if you, if you, if you miss a lifting day, you can tack it on to that fifth day. Yeah. And the yeah. upper, the upper body workout and the running will complement each other. Cause you'll get your heart rate up after you're lifting and you won't be as sore. Right. That's a good plan. Like today I ran too many miles, six miles this morning. And, um, so it would be a good day to not do squats. Right. <laughs> right. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that, that, uh, that, that simple breakdown and you can even get very granular on this as to what exercises you do, uh, what day, but I personally don't because, um, I like to, I like to just say that, um, I will always do whatever workout day it is. I'll just compress the lifts or I'll run for a shorter, longer period of time, depending on um, what my availability is. And then if I notice that I'm missing on, I'm missing out or I'm having to cut back on some training, then I just work, I work to remove that. So if I'm saying, uh, you know what, I'm, I don't need to take calls before nine o'clock. Uh, it's not really helping me. It's not really doing what I wanted to do. So then I'll, 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 I'll be able to work out longer, but you'll notice your habits. If you find it, here's a key piece. If you find yourself consistently not working out for any specific reason, there's, there's usually two things going on. You either have an avoidance strategy of focusing on more convenient activities, or you have to negotiate a boundary both with yourself and, you know, your other commitments, because most people, um, you know, most of my, most of the people in my network are very happy to hear that I'm on a, you know, I can't talk because I'm, you know, training or, you know, I'm doing something restorative and I, I just have to own that. So that no, most of the time it's a boundary with myself, but if, um, if you're having consistent, you know, friction point, you know, if that's the season you're in where you're, where you have an early morning presentation for, you know, for that day or for that week, then maybe you just move your workout as a temporary stop gap so that you can stay in alignment with that. But I always, it's very important to listen to where you're being compressed and why, and is it a negotiation with yourself or is it a negotiation with other people? And, and those are, those are always good questions to ask. Cool. I like that. And I, I see Kayla has a question too. So I want to build off of hers as well. Um, Josh, when you have a second, but just to wrap up what I was thinking about, like initially I kind of get to where I'm like, okay, Tuesday, Thursday are running days. And then I can pick the third one, probably a weekend. Right. But then what if someone says, Hey, do you want to run Monday? And I want to do that and can, or I'm flying. So Tuesday, Thursday won't work or whatever. So I kind of like how we're talking about this to know just looking ahead, like my commitment is to run three days, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, or adapt if needed based on whatever. And that's helpful. So thank you. Oh yeah. Well, and here's the, here, here's the thing. I think, I don't know if Jocko said this or, or whatever. Um, he's like, always take the two workout days in a row because the chances of you having to push back or miss are way higher than the chances of you getting extra runs in during the week. So always, always say yes. If someone wants to run with you, go, go, go for that run. Worst case scenario, you get an extra run in. It's not going to detract from anything. Yeah. Um, is there a record ton of day to do a certain exercise mornings, better than evenings? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. This is, this is a 301 training question because it depends on the person and their, and their Altradian rhythm. And it depends on the activity and the person. So I always lift better in the morning. Like I just categorically will be able to be more explosive and powerful in the morning. And I just run a little bit better in the late morning or early afternoons. Um, however, I'm an early riser. My adrenaline and cortisol are the highest in the morning. 
There's people who's, who have a, a, a mid-morning or a late-morning peak, the classic uh, night owl versus morning glory you know, conundrum. So if your power hours are in the evening, I've never understood people coming into the gym at four or five in the evening to start there or even later, 7 p.m. to do their hard workout. And there's people who do that really well and they go to bed at midnight and they sleep in and they their whole life is tailored that way. Good for them. Uh, so wherever you feel the strongest, you probably are. And that's a great time to do your training. So there, there is definitely a, a best time, but it's dependent on the person and how they relate to time. Um, and then uh, is it better to just get it whenever it is best, more whenever it's most convenient? Yes. So uh, practicality trumps ac academics, you know, in any day of the week. If I only can work out in the afternoon, then, uh, you know, due, due to my schedule, that that's when I'm training. And so for a long time, this is uh, uh, when I first moved to Lake Oswego, that's what it was. I was, my workouts were in the evening, which I would, felt like garbage, but that's fine. Um, because the consistency is what helped my mental state. I'm not living or dying by my, how much weight I can squat. So I'm just happy to be there and, and be doing it. So uh, prioritize when you feel the best. And then uh, always, always, always the program that you can be compliant to is probably the best program for you. Oh, good question, Kayla. Thank you. Um, okay. So we've got training. We've got food. We've got all of these, uh, all of these things into consideration. And we're going to end with snacks and bedtime. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Um, snacks. Well, uh, what's your plan? If it, if you're, if you're did your meal plan at the beginning of this challenge and you've got your food lined up, you may not have any snacks, but if you are in between, like you're doing a, a cut like Tanya's doing where you're at a certain level, you might not have two complete meals. Maybe you have, or three complete meals and like a small little bit of portion of food that you need to eat Then schedule that in. And I, I call it a snack because it could be a whole meal for someone. It could be a, a part of a meal, but uh, you want to make that as convenient to eat as possible. And you can combine it with another meal or you can uh, you put it you know right after a workout is usually the best window for eating. That's something that we didn't talk about uh, in the last few days, but the metabolic window within two hours of eating, you're much more uh, adaptive and your your body goes into protein synthesis, creates new muscle tissue the most easily within that metabolic window, which is two after, two hours after your training. So the more nutrition you can get in at that time, the better. So scheduling snacks inside your metabolic window also makes a lot of sense. So getting the snacks scheduled and then the bedtime, which is lower on the priority list. We all have to go to bed sometime. And if you're, uh, you may be a very routine person. I'm figuring out that I am not, but I started to track my bedtime about six months ago and I realized that I was really not consistent on getting to bed. So if you're new to this, write down your bedtime as a goal and try to wind your way down and get to a point where you're actually putting your head on the pillow to go to sleep at your bedtime. And you'll be shocked at all of the things that come up to do before it's time to turn out the lights. I'm, I'm really impressed with the amount of chores that I haven't done when it, when it comes time for me to brush my teeth, put my, put my clothes out, have the coffee ready. There's a lot that goes into a smooth morning and a, and a, and a complete wind down process in the evening. And I'm still refining that, but it doesn't start until you set that bedtime and give you, give yourself something to shoot for and your bedtime when it should be, when, when the best and most restorative uh, time for sleep is going to be based on your, your schedule, your life schedule, your chronotype, meaning when you get the most energy, when you wake up, when you, when you get tired, when your cortisol level just start to drop, when you go into rest and digest mode. 
But most people, if you're an early riser, you're going to need to go to bed around nine or 10. And if you're someone who likes to get up a little bit later, maybe you like to get up at seven or eight or even nine o'clock, then you could stay up a little bit later. And the the key indicating factor on, or the, the, yeah, the, the key performance indicator on whether or not your sleep is restorative is how, how do you feel when you wake up? Do you feel, you know, excited, energetic, strong, present? focused or do you feel like someone punched you in the face and you're like a boxer coming out of the coming out of the corner after they've been knocked down and the ref's trying to orient orient you to the fight hopefully if you're feeling really good in the morning you're probably doing something right so keep your bedtime and your awake time you know keyed in in such a way that you feel the most regenerated in the morning and uh as someone who has gotten up early their entire life I've been an early riser since I was, you know, in the eleventh grade, and I was in the army, and always had an early morning job. Just very, very much a an early morning person. The, I I felt so exhausted when I woke up in the morning. I, I was getting up at four thirty, five a.m., and I guess I just expected to be tired all the time, and and I certainly was. But it wasn't until in the last six months when I started to adjust my to my chronotype a little bit and play around with my sleep and wake times, that I was actually able to begin to be refreshed from a night of sleep, which has never happened to me. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be 40 you know, this year. So, and I'm very interested in health and I put a lot of energy into getting it right. So these things are, are very personal. They take a lot of fine tuning and patience. And to stay in the theme with this whole challenge, it's, a practice that takes refinement versus uh, a lot of analyzing and using best practices. So we want to get in there and test and and feel, see how it feels in our body and see what's useful so that we can be as strong and productive and as present as we can during the week. When you go through this and, and you write out all of the times when, when you're going to take care of yourself, if it, it, it should feel, you should feel a sense of relief. I feel a sense of peace and clarity. And if you don't, if you're writing everything down and it seems like there's a bunch of heavy objects in your way, whether it's other people's priorities or habits of the past or conversation you have to have with yourself or whatever, then to take it all the way back to the beginning, where do you fit in your life and your world and your list of priorities? Are you giving yourself the grace and the time and the energy to be at your best for all of your commitments in this world? And, or are you like me and are you driving the car in the wrong direction until it run, runs out of gas? So hopefully you get, the, you got the right lessons out of this, this exercise and the most out of our time together. If you have any questions, hit me up and I'll uh, answer them right now. Otherwise, I'm freaking excited. We've got so much fun stuff. Uh, we'll post this video and we'll post the uh, the documents related to it on the resource page again. And we'll have a conversation about accountability and community and how to create those for yourself tomorrow, along with the five pillars of metabolic function, the five pillars of metabolic restoration. So you're going to get a bunch of, bunch of fun stuff, lots of, lots of ideas to help you stay successful in 2024. And um, just so, so glad to be here. Hope you're having a, a great time. Much love everybody. See if I can make this thing spit hard. There they are. Woo. Thank you. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that before. <laughs> It's it's just because I do it so much. This the, the AI loves me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. This was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.